Jeremy Corbyn has been called a danger to this country and a mutton-headed old mugwump. Now, this is by Boris Johnson, the Foreign Secretary, in the Sun newspaper this morning. It represents the fiercest attack mm. on the Labour leader so far in this election campaign. We're joined now by the Shadow Housing Secretary, John Healy. Uh, we're going to talk about your housing plans in just a moment, if we may, John. First of all, we'll give you an opportunity to respond to what Boris Johnson has said about your leader. Do you know, I, also, I almost don't want to sink to his level, really. I just think this is name-calling. Um, I really think that instead of personal attacks, if Conservative ministers want to take issue with what Jeremy Corbyn mm. says and what he wants to do, then let Theresa May debate with him for the future. But, I mean, for a foreign secretary, I think he demeans his office. And really, I think this should be a debate about the future of the country, what sort of country we want Britain mm. to be beyond Brexit. And let's debate the issues that really matter to people, the but sort we... of pressures they face day to day, not this sort of really playground stuff we've had from Boris Johnson. Yeah. Um, well, we found out yesterday that Jeremy Corbyn's not going to take part in the debates. Well, he's not going to... He's, he's said he wants to debate with Theresa May, and that's quite right. We're either going to have a Conservative government or a Labour government after June the 8th, and people want to hear from the two wannabe Prime Ministers. And now they're not going to hear from the him election. either. Well, they won't hear from they won't hear from Jeremy Corbyn if they, if Theresa May is not prepared Do you not to think debate it's worth with Jeremy him. Corbyn? Don't you think that's, I think that's quite. But wouldn't it be a great opportunity for Jeremy Corbyn to have a stage with the other leaders or in in the debate to put his case forward and not be distracted with a constant battle with Theresa May, uh, who is currently the Prime Minister? It's and an open goal, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it no, be because quiet? no, because in the end, this is for people. On June the 8th, this is a choice between a Conservative government and a Labour government mm. and a question of who's got the best plan to rescue the, the NHS, who's John, best for the leading, Conservatives living standards. There to, to, and you to, really... to defend themselves, then Jeremy Corbyn can just, just lay on the line all the bad things that they've done and all the great things that Labour would do to sort them out. And they can't turn around and say, hold on a sec, that's not true. But the problem is responsibility that if these debates don't go ahead, and people want these debates, they've got used to having these debates, they watch these debates, yeah. then really... An incumbent Prime Minister that wants to continue after June the 8th really should be ready to stand up, debate with the leader of the party that offers the only real alternative. I think the danger is that people will think it looks like he's running scared of debating with the others when he had the opportunity to say that the Prime Minister was running scared. Do you know, I think people will see the opposite. I think they'll, they'll take the cue from the Prime Minister. They'll ask, why isn't she prepared to face Jeremy Corbyn one-to-one? -one? And if, any, if, they can, if they conclude anyone's running scared, it'll probably be a view that why is the Prime Minister ducking this debate? The Foreign Secretary is basically accusing uh, your leader of being weak and muddle-headed. And some of the uh, examples that people look at when they hear this is that in recent days we've heard him say that he wants to be Prime Minister but he won't use nuclear weapons. Instead, he'd promise the country four new bank holidays. Um, there will be no freedom of movement for people after Brexit. However, uh, Labour would guarantee the rights of EU citizens in the UK. Um, you've promised money to the NHS from putting up corporation tax, uh, money that you've already promised to multiple other things, and therefore you couldn't afford, surely, to pay for all of these things with this increase in corporation tax. The message sounds muddled, doesn't it? No. I mean, isn't this precisely the sort of things that people are concerned about? Isn't this precisely why you want a debate between the two main party leaders, the two potential prime ministers after June the 8th, head to head, so that they can debate the things that are worrying people, the plans for the future, including how we get the Brexit negotiations done and what sort of plan we have or they have for the country after Brexit? Um, you voted in... Uh, during the EU referendum campaign. Your colleague Barry Gardner was here this week. He still has his campaigning sticker on his iPad for the Remain campaign. Um, people are concerned that Labour hasn't come to terms with Brexit in the same way that the Conservatives seem to have come to terms with Brexit. Have you? Uh, I think that's plain wrong. We, we said on the day after the referendum, this is the result, the people have decided, we put that question to the people. Britain is leaving the European Union. A Labour government would see that through. 
we'd conduct our negotiations and do the deal for Britain for the future on a very different basis from the Conservatives. Mm. But th this will not be a rerun of the referendum, this general election. This will be about the question for people, do, which party has the best plan for the future to deal with the sort of problems and pressures they face? And crucially, after seven years of failure, do they really want to see five more years of the same? Okay, well, one, failing... of the, one of the policies that you're interested in, of course, housing. You're Indeed. here to talk about it. Um, there was, you know, a failure of house building under a Labour government. So what are you going to do to fix that if you get well, into in fact, government? Under, under, under Labour, we didn't get everything right. No government does. But we saw two million new homes built, a million new uh, households become homeowners, and the biggest investment is social housing for a generation. So th to talk about the seven years of failure, which is what we were talking about earlier on, since then, I'm afraid, we've seen home ownership fall, lowest rate now for 30 years, rough sleeping homelessness double, and mm. we're sitting in central London here 